Welcome to People. I'm Shirley Lin, and today I'm here at the studio, which belongs to Tim Budden, who is a paper cutting artist from Wales, the UK, and he's been here in Taiwan 25 years. Now, um, if you don't know what paper cutting is, just look at this thing right behind us. This is what paper cutting is, the Chinese way. <laughs> Anyway, hi Tim. Hi, hi Shirley. All right. Yeah, um, you were explaining to me that uh, in Western countries, if you say you're into paper cutting, it would be people working with paper. But you are not that. You're a paper cutting artist, and we're talking about artist as in paper cutting something like this. Mm. So I hope you guys get the idea. Now, <laughs> it's a very intricate, but beautiful elegant, romantic kind of art. That's how I see it. But let's go way back. I mean, how, are, why, why, why are you here? Well, no, why are you into paper cutting? Why how am I into that, paper cutting? Yeah, okay. how did that get started? Uh, well, That's not it, what you studied. No, actually, I, I, I went to art school. I uh, did my master's in um, sculpture. And um, so sculpture is, is a very important element. So the idea of sculpture is that you start with something like a piece of stone or a piece of wood or whatever it is, and then you cut and take away. You cut and take away until you reveal a head or something you're trying to carve. And paper cutting is exactly the same, yeah. except I'm using a knife and paper. I'm cutting and I'm taking away. I'm cutting and I'm taking away. And there I have my image, oh. which is the opposite of when we're drawing. Because we're drawing, we're always adding something. I'm adding a line, I'm adding a shade, I'm adding a color, whatever. Right. So, okay, so we've got sculpture. Then, um, a lot of my paper cutting, ha um, I like to tell stories. Yeah. All right, Tim, you said you've got to explain something about this one right here. It's all red and it's just got pictures of boys. Little well, Chinese boys in here. Yeah, well, mm. it, it, it's a com the, the, the boys are a combination of uh, my son and myself. And my, my son has this secret dance. So uh, he likes to close his bedroom door and do his secret dancing. Oh, really? And it's his way of dealing with uh, his life, okay. his, the, his day. Did you ever see this dancing? Oh, yeah. He's oh, all right. pushing. It's very secretive. And, okay. uh, so anyway. So I like the idea of these little boys dancing around. Mm. And in this, the, the, the story is very clear. There's 101. Ah. And um, several years ago, um, they, the, when they were building 101, Songshan Airport said that 101 is too tall and mm -hmm. it's going to affect the planes. Okay. They're going to hit it. Mm -hmm. So I had this idea of um, my little dancing boy on a scooter and he's crashing into 101 and he's saying, <laughs> oops. His friends think it's so cool that, he, that this has happened. So they're all going, wow, and doing their kind of street dancing. Oh. So all this is happening. So it's a kind of crazy, chaotic crash, bang, help. All this is going on. Meanwhile, there's a plane flying across the sky straight towards oh, 101. Oh, I see a room. Yeah, room. Oh, now I see the plane. Yeah. Oh, now I see the plane. Where are you in, here, in this? Where you am I? You, I? I'm probably here, this one here. Nine year old. Yeah. Back when you were nine year old. That's probably me. And uh, at the same time, I have a row of cockroaches. Oh, cockroaches. <laughs> yeah, cockroaches. Because cockroaches are, are kind of with us yes. here in yeah. this place because this is about Taipei right they're with us they're around all the time and in the sky we have the cloud and the sun so we have this kind of heaven and the earth and kind of where somewhere in between yeah so you started with sculpturing yeah okay what was your favorite medium back then was it stone or was it wood or it actually it was uh, polystyrene Polystyrene. You know the like, packing you get yeah. in uh, when you get a TV? Styrofoam? Like styrofoam, yeah. Because, okay, okay. My, my, um, I had another job at the time, and that was working in a big, uh, big theatre, big opera company in Wales, the biggest opera company, the you national. You were doing the props. I was making the props, and uh, we would use huge pieces of styrofoam mm. and then carve them into rocks or carve them into... Uh, parts of trees or parts of buildings or parts of a ship, that kind of thing. 
You've so, got big hands. I have big hands. My, I come big... from a farming family, so yeah. my uncles now, have enormous hands. Actually, when it comes to something as intricate as this, are big hands an advantage or disadvantage? I don't know. Or, or smaller I've... hands with thin, thinner fingers is mm. a better... <laughs> I've never thought about that. <laughs> I've never thought, of, I mean, it means I can be very uh, dexterous, I can use, I mean, I'm very good at using my, the knife in a very kind of, like I'm drawing, but I'm using a knife. Yeah. So I need to be able to move in that kind of very fine way. You've got thin fingers. Yeah. You've got big hands, but That's thin right. fingers. That's right, yes. So, did your parents discover that you've got this talent, or you just had this hobby of working with little things? and? cutting things and carving things um, what, what I, do you remember from your childhood okay well the thing is i think the 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 biggest memory i have is um i remember being in school uh when i was very young when i was nine years old and i remember one day drawing a tree the project we were all drawing trees and for some reason i, I can't remember what but the teacher saw my tree and said it was the most beautiful tree she'd ever seen okay, okay. at that moment i thought to myself i'm going to be an artist really that's At my nine life years goal old. yeah i just it just was um just a light bulb and i i have a, a, a stubborn streak in me so from then on everything i did was to go towards art and my original goal was to become an art lecturer in a university mm -hmm. but because of the economic situation at the time that wasn't possible so that's when I moved into the theatre, started working in the theatre, okay. and, um, and then eventually came here. Did you ever try acting? Just a side <laughs> question here. <laughs> you know, I'm very bad at that. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very natural as a teacher, I think, when I do uh, my teaching. And, um, but if I'm acting, when I have to think about the actual act of acting, I'm terrible, I'm useless. Oh, well, but you never gave it a try. <laughs> I did. I, I had you several did. screen tests, I, lots of screen tests, yeah, but I just freeze. Really? Yeah, I just freeze. I have no idea what to do. Well, you're just better off, off stage then, backstage. And, <laughs> yes. And doing the, I don't know, you, your part is very important too, to a stage play. I mean, the props then. How many years were you working in that with stage props and uh, only about two and a half three okay, years okay. and then then what i was... came here then you came here yeah no but what brought you here and why it's um okay was it some, my an angel in your life <laughs> no it wasn't an no? angel it was my father okay my father was in business here uh -huh. and um my brother and i used to come and visit uh a few times and then one time I came with a friend and we went traveling through um, Malaysia and Thailand and eventually ended up in Taiwan mm -hmm. and then uh, I decided I was going to stay a little bit longer I wasn't going to go back so I decided to stay a little bit longer my friend went back and because I, I could stay with my father yeah and um, then I met a Taiwanese girl. Mm -hmm. So you know how one thing <laughs> leads to another. Yeah. And so that, it was, uh, to start with, it was a month's vacation. Okay. And then that went to, okay, I'll stay for six months. Uh -huh. But then I needed um, money mm -hmm. to, to survive. So then I started working here, uh, teaching English. Okay. And then... Um, Surprisingly enough, I got very, very into teaching and um, I began to really love the idea of um, being in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So I, I stayed longer mm -hmm. and it just like that, it just went on and on and on and I'm still here. Yeah, <laughs> but how has this Chinese paper cutting got into your life? Oh, yeah. oh, right. Well, okay. So when I came here and I got very into the teaching, the downside of that was I pushed my art to one side mm -hmm. and just focused on the teaching. Oh, so you were at the time, kind of during your spare time and as a hobby, you were already playing around with paper cutting? No, I wasn't. I had, I no. had, uh, there was, n I found there was nothing here that I could connect my art to. 
In the UK, what I realize now is that my art was very connected into a, 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 the culture of that place and at that time. Okay. When I came to Taiwan, everything was wow. Everything was new, uh, new to alien to me. The bright neon lights, the people, the food, the, the nightlife. I'm surprised you mentioned bright neon lights. <laughs> well, at that time, <laughs> it all was. Linsem, okay. Beilu. With yeah. just this amazing uh, road, just full of neon lights. I know the signs were yeah, all neon lights. Absolutely, yes. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and um, so, so, so because there was nothing for my art to feed on here, um, I stopped. You thought. Yeah. Right. Yes. And focused on the teaching. What I realize now is that we all have this kind of creative energy within us, and my creative creative energy at that time moved from my art into the art of teaching. Teaching. So I got very into that, and I also became an author of, of um, textbooks. Oh, really? And Good. I became a teacher trainer, so I was training teachers. But wait a minute. What about the cartoon drawing part? When, 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 when did that fit in? Um, was... Well, that was when I was working at the opera. On the side, I was doing cartoon strips, which were published ah. in, the, in the UK and in Europe. I see. Okay. All right. Okay. So, anyway. Yeah. So... Then you were so into teaching and everything, <clears throat> and then... Well, after about 10, 12, maybe longer, 15 years of teaching... Um, that long. Yeah, I, I began to get burnt out. Mm. And um, mm. I began to get bored, and um, that began to worry me, um, because I have a family. And um, then I realized I needed to do something. And at that point, I realized that little boy at nine years old, was still there, and he was saying, Tim, you decided to be an artist. That's what you need to do. Okay. So I quit my job, and I went back to my art. And uh, it, it just so happened that around that time, a very good friend showed me a book of uh, paper cutting from mainland China. Mm -hmm. As soon as I saw those paper cuts, I knew that's where I need to go. Yeah. Because A, it contains stories, B, it's cutting, carving, and uh, instantly I had a connection. I mean, for many, many years, I've been very interested in the kind of folk arts here, the, the visiting temples and puppets. Uh, puppets. I love puppets. And I've been collecting old temple gods and old puppets. Yeah. Um, just because I just find those beautiful objects. Mm. Lanterns. Lanterns, lanterns. and um, all these things have been there in my mind all the years and it would, I just needed a way to find a focus where I could bring it all out. Right. And so then as soon as I discover paper cutting, mm -hmm. um, and then the, the same person introduced me to this kind of material Right, which is actually more like silk. It's a silk, yeah. One side is, one paper, side is paper and one side is silk. silk. So that's a great combination because the paper makes it stiff mm. and the silk makes it very strong. Right. So it's a perfect combination and you get this beautiful sheen, the, yeah, the shiny yeah, yeah. sheen of silk. Right. So it was the same person who introduced me to that and uh, that was it. I just started and I couldn't stop. Well, do you have your very first piece that you did? I mean, this kind of paper cutting here um, in the studio? No, I don't have it that's here. Okay. But what was that about? It was a, a face. It was a face. Um, I think uh -huh. it was a. I think it was. It was supposed to be my face. Okay. At, at that time, I wasn't very happy because I was burnt out. Yeah. And I was finding my life, I was kind of getting bored with what so I was doing. So you say it was a sad face? No, it wasn't a sad <laughs> face. It was a face full of energy. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. It, it you was want a, to get there. Right. It, it's that creative, creative energy uh -huh. looking for somewhere to go. Wow. And mm -hmm. um, because uh, I was burnt out with the teaching, it needed to go somewhere. Okay. And so when it came out into the paper cutting, the first pieces I made were all to do with heads and faces, mm -hmm. and, but full of energy. Oh, wow. So, 
then you started putting these artwork on a blog. You start a blog. Is that how I, it happened? Um, Because then people start discovering you. You didn't go around telling people, "Hey, this is what I do." You know, come to me. Well, gosh, it's going back.、Um, yes, go back. <laughs> I'm just fascinated. There, there was a, at that time there was a group of、um, expat artists、um, based in Tiamu, some from the American school and、uh-huh. some from the foreign community there. Who would meet regularly, and so I joined that group. Okay. And、um, then we started exhibiting around, and、oh, that's how it started. So you guys held exhibits of your personal yes, works. Yes. Yes. Okay. At like American school,、um, at the carnivals, and、um, well, it was mostly、uh, restaurants.、Uh, Patrick, restaurants. Yes. Now that's a very interesting idea. Um, it's it's a very interesting idea, but it's not a good idea for an artist. Oh, why is that? Because people go to a restaurant to eat. Yes, that's true. No, you know they when they go there,、uh, the first they go there with whoever they're going with,、yeah. and、um, they go in and they sit down, they look at the menu, then they chat, they talk, and then the food comes, then they eat. Yeah. And then it's only when they get to the coffee at yes, the end、yes. that they might okay look around. They might look around. And go, oh, oh, that looks interesting. But <laughs> okay, it's time to go now. Oh. So I、okay. I found that experience a, a little bit disappointing.、Mm-hmm. You know, because you put your soul and your heart and your energy into making artworks,、yeah. and then people don't notice them. It's、mm. it's like wallpaper. I see. So that was a little bit.、Uh, Disturbing, but anyway, I, then I was introduced to a, a gallery downtown、yes. run by、um, a Taiwanese、uh, professor. Okay. And so that's the first show I had outside of that kind of expat right. community. Right. Right. Because the expat group was like everybody was doing different kinds of art.、Right? Yes. Yes. But but this one、uh, that you got introduced to in downtown Taipei was just only exhibiting your work. Yes. Yes. Ah.、Yeah. So. Yeah, the first chance of a solo ex-、um, exhibit. Yes, yeah, and that's when I realized that, I mean, in, in、uh, this culture, this society, paper cutting is not seen as art. It's seen as a folk art. There's folk a, art. There's a big difference. Yeah. Collectors love a nice oil painting. Yeah. Or a nice ink painting.、Mm-hmm. Okay. Or a nice jade carving. If it's a paper cut, it's like.、Oh, That's what the common people do,、really? because it's not、um, in, in this culture, this society, and, and including、uh, Greater China in all this.、Uh-huh. It's something that、um, old ladies,、uh, women, tend to do. Oh yes. And、uh, you know, in in old and old society, it was a way for a woman to prove how good she is with her、Best、fingers. Her yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so you it, shattered this traditional way of thinking. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So you've got this white middle-aged guy、uh, doing paper cutting, and when I was with this TMU group, there was many ladies in this group, and they were all oil painting.、Mm. So when we had our exhibitions, there's oil paintings, and then there's a paper cutting, and then people were so surprised that the paper cutting was done by this guy.、Oh, yes. And all the oil paintings were done by the ladies,、uh-huh. so it's kind of whoa, it, what a contrast. Yes,、uh-huh. yeah, and so、um, so when I started exhibiting in galleries downtown, that's when I realised collectors.、Um, it's difficult to sell my kind of work here because collectors really yes because collectors tend to go for、oil、the more traditional style of what they think of as art. Yeah. Then what happened? But I mean, people then once they once they get to know you and know just the intricacy of this art itself, I think they would start to have a bigger interest in what you do in in your work, right? Yeah. So you had the opportunity to explain your art、mm. and just you know the story behind it and all that, right? So I was I was very lucky to be offered a show in the Shuhua Bouguan. Oh yeah, that's the paper museum. Yeah, that's the, the, the memorial. Yeah, paper memorial museum. That's、yeah. right, and、um, it's a private, privately owned museum,、mm-hmm. and the, but the people there are totally dedicated to, to paper. paper, and、um, 
So I, I was lucky enough to have an exhibition with them and then they've been supporting me since then. So they've bought a, a, one of a big piece of mine and um, they are wanting to help me promote um, some of my work. Mm -hmm. So it's good to know there are people here who are kind of appreciative of, of the work I do and right. want to try and help me um, promote it and to um, develop myself as an artist. You said they bought a piece. Mm. Is it still hanging in the museum? Um, no, actually, it, it's hanging in the owner's apartment. The owner's one? Yeah, right? it was... Well appreciated. Yes, yeah, <laughs> it was a very big lantern. Um, I did for an exhibition. Three dimensional? Yes, a big round lantern. Oh, you got to see this. That yeah. I made for Chinese last Chinese New Year. And oh, it was just recent, just last. Yeah, th recent? this one, this one was in uh, January. Yeah, and okay. um, it was exhibited in Bopiliao. Oh yes, in Bo Pilia, It was um, an old, um, a restored, Street. old part of yeah. Taipei. Yeah. It's quite beautiful, mm. and um, so it, w it was exhibited there, then the museum decided to buy it. Ah, that is great. Mm. So, this paper museum tried to help you develop your career. Mm -hmm. Any success, any good stories that came from there? Well, since then, um, uh, because I've all, all also started teaching art, um, right. Now you went from teaching English for 15 years to teaching art now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, uh, uh, I, I still teach a little bit of English. Okay. I, I still need some uh, something to pay the bills, but I'm teaching a lot more art. Yes. And um, through, through teaching paper cutting at uh, the culture, the uh, cultural university, Wenhua. Oh, yes. Um, then I, uh, one of my students, um, made a beautiful paper cut which she put on her Facebook and one of her friends shared it and then one of that friends saw it and thought that's beautiful and then everything came back to me and then they uh, it was um, Fubang, Fubang Art Foundation yes someone from there so they then they invited me to um, join an exhibition over the summer uh. and also to do a couple of workshops um, with, one with children and one with um, adults, mm -hmm. all based around paper cutting. So that was, it. That was over the summer. And, um, and then following that, then uh, a tea company, uh, Twinings, yes, a British tea right. company. It's the most recent project that you're working on right now. Right, it's what I'm working on in this studio at the moment, right. trying to finish it, trying to finish it. <laughs> We're going to show it to everybody <laughs> later. So, um, yeah, they came to me and um, they wanted to do some kind of cooperation as part of an annual event they run, um, oh, really? promotional event. Hmm. So this year they have five artists, um, all with some connection with the UK. Wow, so the that, other that four, could have been easy, but anyway. Well, the other four are, are Taiwanese who were educated okay. in the UK, and then there's me. Uh -huh. And so... Um, Part of the project is to, to design a tea box. Yes. Um, which will be sold in Taiwan. Did they give you a theme? Or you no, it's no, it, um, you? it's just, it's, uh, the theme is elegance, British elegance. Oh, British elegance. Yes. Um, did they tell you what flavor of tea they are? Oh, oh okay. No. I don't know if that helps you with your <laughs> you know, inspiration, but anyway. Well, I do drink tea. I've been drinking tea almost every day. For since I was what ten years old, I think I started drinking tea um, regularly. Chinese tea now, or um, I I drink green tea. Green tea. Um, but I still have my I like English breakfast tea and I like uh, Earl Grey tea. All right. So I will drink those two in the day and green tea at night. Oh good, no coffee. Oh, and there's coffee in between. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, anyway, so back to this twining. Mm. Now, so you're rushing this job right here, trying to get it done, but um, I'm yeah. sure it's going to turn out really beautiful. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. Yes, um, oh, but artists are all perfectionists. I need it to be absolutely right. I'm sure. So, is there an, a, a theme or an idea behind this twining project for you, your part? For me, um, okay. 
they gave me the idea of elegance. Yes. Okay. Then I started to look at the uh, the artwork on their uh, tea boxes, the current tea boxes, and um, I, I took elements from the these these designs, yeah. and then I started to combine them. Uh huh. And then I looked at the colors as well. Okay. And I connected those colors with uh, colors that affect me. Because I, I find I'm a very visual person and I love color. Sure. I, I totally adore color. So um, I was very into incorporating the colors I could see in their, in their various tea boxes with some of the patterns. Mm -hmm. But connecting it all together is uh, my own uh, continuing story using the butterflies. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, yeah, the butterflies. So I, I use the, the motif of the butterfly. It's, um, you that, like butterflies? I like the idea of butterflies and I like the meaning of butterflies. It's because when you look at the, the history of, of, butterflies? of butterflies, for example, in ancient Greek, um, the word for butterfly was the same word as soul. Soul. So the idea was when someone died, their soul would leave their body uh, in, 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 as a butterfly. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So I, I like that connection. But now we've got, and that word was psyche. Uh -huh. And um, now when we think of psyche, we think of um, it's our being. Mm. And um, so we have psychology and psychiatry. It comes from that root word. Mm. So I like that connection between us and the butterfly. Okay. So in, in the reason I'm using butterflies is that I, I see butterflies. Uh, of course, the, the reason I'm using main reason I'm using butterflies is because in Taiwan there are so many. Yeah, I was gonna it's say. just an amazing. Uh, you go into the mountains and it's just amazing. You see these enormous butterflies, all yeah. different kinds, right? Just flying around. Okay. And um, so we can relate. Taiwanese people can relate. Yeah. What you do with butterflies. Okay. Yeah. And and you know just something something simple like uh, down south every year they close a part of the freeway. Oh yes. To allow the butterfly migration. The migration, I know. You know. They, the sad story is that they. They hit themselves on the highway. Okay, yeah. we're not going to get to that. All right. But so, you know what? Mm. If you don't mind me saying this, you said you really like colors. Yes. But I see that you, you're still a very low-key person. You don't try to make yourself obvious by wearing bright colors yourself. Although, you use bright colors. And look at the sofa. <laughs> you know, you are a very humble man. But you like what you do. People discover you more than you coming on and say, hey, here's me. Mm. You're not that kind of person. You kind of quietly do your work, but you do it to perfection. Mm. And yeah, somehow I, you let people discover you. Yes. Yeah, I'd say that's a fair assessment. <laughs> <laughs> I think my personality, I mean, I mean, as I was saying, you know, I work here alone. Yeah. Um, I can be here for many hours. And um, it can be lonely. It can be very lonely, but uh, I have but they my have a good stereo. With yes, them. <laughs> I need good music, mm. and um, also no um, phone calls. Nobody call you. Well, you you shut off the phone. You don't want people to interrupt. Yeah, it can get it can get in the way, and and because the process of cutting, it can be very meditative, meditative. Yes. So you and you can't stop. I tell you, once you start, it's very difficult to stop. Even. To eat, even to, go to, to the eat. bathroom. Yeah, yeah. You hold on. You hold on. I just do a few more, a few more, and half an hour later, it's still. It's not going to run away. No, I know, but you just get into this flow. Oh. That's the thing. It's this flow of. This um, is amazing. <laughs> really. So, where do you want to go from here? I know Twining has found found you, and you're doing this great project. You're rushing. I'm sure you do great. Yeah. Well, okay. What's next? For you um, what's next? Yeah. What's next for me? Well. Be bold. Dream big. Okay. I, I've, I, I make art, but I do believe in people seeing my art is a very important part mm -hmm. of my. I believe my art should 
I want to communicate something with people. I don't want to make my art and just hide it away. I want yeah. it to be out there. So for me, um, exhibiting is a very important element. And, um, you know, and I, I do believe every artist does hope that people will um, show a kind of um, commitment to my art in that maybe they start to buy it, collect it. I would like that to happen. Okay. At the moment, I, I mean, I've sold pieces, um, which has been great mm -hmm. and fantastic. Sometimes it's very hard because they're like my babies, you oh, know? which you don't want to sell. I know, and this is part of, this is one of the, the problems I think many artists will also have. Yeah, you're right. I never thought that. But at the same time, I, I have a family. I need to, um, you know, I need to provide for my family. So you struggle between giving up your best, your favorite, yeah. and keeping <laughs> your favorite. Oh, what... So that's a problem, what yes. What torture. What torture, yes. And I, I actually, last year, I went to see a, a coach, and um, a, a, a personal uh, coach, In a lifestyle coach. Cutting? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, <laughs> she deals with uh, business people or people with uh, personal issues, uh -huh. and they need someone just to coach them through it. Yeah. And she realized that I do have a problem in letting go of my work. Well, and she said, I need to change the way I um, view this okay. and to, uh, like when uh, our children grow up and they go off to university, you've got to say, you goodbye, know, right. good luck. That's what I need to say to my work. Well, I, I can almost feel that I would be the same. You know, I'll be stuck in that kind of <laughs> sentiment. <laughs> wow. Last thing I want to ask you. Uh, you might have an ask, you might not, but that's okay. If you were to leave Taiwan one day, yes. what's that one sound you would miss? Okay, you, you did ask me this, <laughs> and uh, I thought about this carefully. Okay, yeah. um, I actually have three sounds. Okay. Okay, yeah. they're equally uh, important to me. Okay. The first one, is, there, there's a kind of tree, it's called a causerina. Okay. You find this uh, near the oceans. Mm -hmm. It likes dry soil, uh, salty air. We had that in Taiwan? Yes, yes. And it's like a pine tree. Okay. So the, the leaves are very long and thin. Okay. The sound of the wind as it goes through the tree is just the most beautiful sound you can oh, imagine. I can't reproduce that sound, but anyway. <laughs> okay, kinda, now. All right, I have an opportunity to see that. The other one, yes. of course, the opposite. So that's a very gentle, soft, very soothing sound. Okay. Then there's the cicadas. Uh, <laughs> when they start their chorus yes. and it just be grows and grows and grows. That's oh, yeah. an amazing sound. That's right. And the third? The third sound is the sound of cooking in a Chinese restaurant. Mm. When Do they you use cook that way? No, you we have... Could. Yeah, when they have the... I, I don't know how... The walk. Yes. And you get this <laughs> sound. Yes. And then shkunk, shkunk, as they... That's a beautiful that sound. That was beautiful. That You've is. been made. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, Tim, it's been a lot of fun talking to you and learning so much and hearing your story. It's so touching. And really, I'm sure you're going to do great because okay. you're, you're a unique person doing a unique form of art. That's very kind so, of you to say. Thank yeah. You. All right. Thank Appreciate you. That. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you for your time. Okay, thanks. Thank you for watching, people. I'm Shirley Lynn.